as a fact with my friend Jeff, uh, also known as Corey Cook here. Um, and we are going to go, and tonight we're going to speak about blinking, how to use brushes, how to, how to maintain your brush, how to, what, what the best practice is with using a brush, um, and that type of stuff. And since we have traditional brushes, I'm going to be using traditional brushes tonight. Oh. And not, uh, any type of, um, uh, uh, what is it? Any type of, uh, water brushes or anything like that. Um, which I tend to use at times. So tonight I'm going to just be using traditional brushes. All right, it's my turn. Welcome, everybody. My name is Corey Saucier. Welcome to Hot Sketch. Uh, we'll be, uh, Sketching and drawing and geek talking with me, my buddy, V's house. Um, check out the dual stream with both of us. Um, he's going to be doing a little tutorial with me because I just got a whole bunch of new uh, inks and brushes and stuff. And I don't know how to use them. And so he's going to help me. So, all right, we're going to do that. Uh, I hope you guys can hear him too. Um, but I'm say a little hello for me. Hello. Perfect. I think it's good. All right. Based on what OBS says to me, I think it's good. All right, so everybody, um, you, right? I'm, so if it's telling me the truth, uh, I got my pink hat on. I got my apple juice. I got my gummy bears. Uh, I got a thousand pencils and a thousand brushes and gallons of ink. Uh, and uh, my buddy V's house on the other end. So uh, if I'm not talking, he's going to be talking. So sit back, grab some pencils uh, and a notebook, and let's go. All right, so basically, the first thing you want to make sure you have is an inkwell. Um, the inkwell can be anything from a medicine bottle cap to a plastic container. So this here is a medicine bottle cap or a medicine uh, uh, cup, right? You can use one of those from like NyQuil or whatever the heck, whatever you have handy and available. That way you're not uh, dipping your, your brush directly into a actual ink well that would be holding the ink normally when you get to the store and stuff like that, you would end up buying an ink well that looks kind of like this, right? Depending on what it is. This is the Sumi, uh, Sumi Black Ink. Black Sumi Ink is a Japanese ink. And this is the uh, Speedball uh, Super Black India Ink, uh, which is my, uh, my, my one of my top choices to use for inking. Um, and that's what's in this cap here. Actually, in this cap here, it's a mixture of speedball and the Dick Blick uh, black cap. Did you say Dick? Uh, yes, I did. Woohoo! That's, that's the name of the shop. It's Blick, or it used to be named Dick Blick. Woo! Again, woohoo for Dick! Oh my god, stop it. <laughs> um, so, this is what I'm using for my inkwell. Okay. Um, pretty much, you can buy those these little cats. But you can buy them at like a, a 98 cent store or a 99 cent store. They come in a 10 ounce pack or whatever. And then you can fill them up with a bunch of ink. I tend to buy a cheap uh, sponge to hold my ink in. As you can see, I have a bunch of different inks that I use, that I test. I also have white ink that I use for um, cleanups and corrections. Um, so I have all that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be utilizing that ink and this sponge. So this sponge is going to hold my ink here. This is the little eyedropper that I got. And this allows me to pull the things up and if I want to put it in to a pen or like a, a, a micron or something like that to refill it with ink, you can do that as well instead of just tossing them out. Um, and then I have, but you want to make sure that you're using a universal ink when you do that. But again, that we can do a tutorial on that later, but I'm going to fill in that pen. Um, so, the blue brushes we're going to be using today is a number four um, art store uh, 200 series uh, surround brush. Then we're going to be using a uh, 200 series zero uh, round brush as well. And then I have my uh, a Cubert School uh, stable. Uh, I think this is my number three or my number i think those are my number two yeah my stable hair number two western uh uh western newton uh round brush and this is this is 
Normally, like the go to get the first, the most complex interface, they always use the stable. All right. Um, so can so I'm gonna pause and see if I can go through and match up with what you just said. So you're gonna okay. do a number three, right? Number four. A number four. All right. Um, I don't have a number four. What number do you have? I have a number three. Uh -huh. A number seven. Okay. Basically, I have a one through seven. You have one through seven. Do you have a number three, Beth? Yeah, I have a number three. No, a number four. You don't have a number four? For some reason, I don't. I have a one, two, three, one, two, three, five. Okay. Um, That's fine. Yeah, I have a one, two, three, five. So this is, so everybody, this is, this, so my best friend um, uh, in the world, V's house is, uh, as you guys know, an accomplished artist. And this week, um, because I told him that I was going to be inking the last piece I did, he came with a box of ink stuff for me. So I have no idea how to use any of it, uh, which is why we're doing this tutorial right now. But I am most excited about using this guy. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's like a black quilled thing. And it's the last thing that I used to ink when I was like in my 20s. So I'm very excited to use it again. Um, but so the thing that looks like you have, I have that's close to a four is a seven, right on. It's like a really okay. thick thing. Is this look close? No, that's fine because I have a number nine. Okay. Um, I have a number nine, I have a number four. I have a bunch of brushes. Um, but right. the, number, the number four and the, the number, the larger brushes like that are normally used for spotting black. At least for myself, I use them to spot heavy black areas. So like, for instance, if I was going to go ahead and say ink of this piece here, right? I would turn around and do all my detail work with, like, say, a, a number two, right, or a zero, and ink that area. And then... I'm so I'm anxious about using these brushes, but um, it seems like it's just going to be a fucking mess. It's not. <laughs> it just seems like I'm going to have ink, like... As eyeliner and lipstick pen line, I'm gonna look like a chola by the end of the night. I just <laughs> okay. <laughs> Until I I feel. So these are the the brushes that I have out, and then these two. Okay, keep going. And so you okay, have a... your number two. All right. So you're gonna do everything with just the number two brush. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. All right. So everything that you need to do, we're gonna do with number two. Now the first thing you want to do when you when you're when you're doing anything with ink, right? Ah, Jesus, everything's just falling all over the shop. What happened? I only have a big ass table. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, and the first thing you want to do when you're when you're doing anything with ink, you want to make sure that you don't dip your ink all the way into the to the tip up here to the metal. You just want to dip as much of it to the tip, right? Just like that. You don't want to put too far and too much. You can, you know, you can dab it off. Oh wait, are you mm -hmm. pulling out inks already? Uh oh. Yeah. And what am I gonna put this ink on directly onto the drawing already? Is this no 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 no, no. pull out a, a blank sheet of paper. Oh okay. Get a blank sheet of paper, what are you doing? I'm ready to ink. <laughs> okay, I'm ready to I'm ready to start. Let's do it. Uh-huh. You should you might want to start with the pen. Yeah, that's what I think too. I think the brush is gonna be a little extra for me. It's a little I'm I I think it's a great thing to sort of get like, you know, as a thing to aspire to. But I think I'm going to start with the, the, the pens tonight. Okay, so I have the ink quill out, your well thing. Okay. And what do I do with this thing? I just sit it somewhere? Hold on. Is this like a stopper? Oh, my God. What is this? Is this a stopper? It is a stopper. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an eyedropper. Oh, that's great. So you remember how I gave you that other, the little, the little container like this? Yeah. 
So you use the eyedropper to pour some ink into that so you don't have to dip your, your brush all the way into the ink well due to the fact that you don't want to get the ink all the way up to the Here's end. my little flower container that I think he's talking about. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's what he's talking about. I'm not sure. But uh, here's uh, a dropper. Um, you don't see this thing? The little cup that I have in my hand? I do. Now I do. You have to come down a little bit. Um, no, I see it. It's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So that little cup, you should have one of those. Okay. And that's what you can put some ink into. But you can also use your little flower thing as well. Put some ink on there. So you can just dip the tip into that. Okay. Uh, okay, I see that. You're talking about this guy, yes? This little thing? Yep, that's yeah, for you holding have, ink. You have ink in your, uh, you have ink on your little, uh, the file. Your file. Okay. So you have that little Got it. Perfect. Yeah. I like your new camera setup. That's cool. Do you really? If you can yeah. see, like, the light and the camera, though, in the camera shot, which is that's very yeah. amateur. Uh, it's showtime at the Apollo. In the, in the, uh, in the shop, well, don't know. tell them, but I think it's amateur hour. Okay. <laughs> but don't tell them that. Okay. I won't, I won't tell them that. So the big thing about inking with a brush, right, is you want to make sure you get your ink, your uh, brush to a nice tip. So one of the things you do is after you dip it, you can... Put some of the acid ink first onto a spot that's going to have heavy black so you can basically roll the brush into your hand and create a tip, right? Can you, can you do that or are you too busy seeing? I'm trying to get the brush out of the, the little holder. I can see that. Okay, well, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> So yeah, uh, just you know, give me some time. <laughs> okay, now I'm making it into a tip, yeah. Right? Yeah, so you make it into a tip, right? Mm -hmm. And after that, you go ahead and you, you gently put the brush onto the canvas of the paper. Okay. And then you just pull. So I like to throw my lines when I'm inking with a brush. When I'm inking in general, I like to throw lines, which is what I'm doing. I'm throwing lines. You can also turn around and do it like most people and pull your lines, right? Like if you're a tennis and you're drawing with them. Now, I like to go from thick to thin, where you put a, a little mm. more pressure on the brush and then you pull, right? So that's why Whoa. I'm okay. Um, you can go ahead. And, and create a nice oh hell no! Really nice. It takes practice. <laughs> it takes practice. Because the 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 quill bends. Well, you're putting too much pressure. Well, I obviously, but it it um. See the thing about it is that if you oh, no. you turn around and get like super thin lines, if you barely touch the page. Right, you see, I'm, I'm getting really thin lines. There's no way I'll be using this right now. Or you can do thick lines. There's, like I am, it would take me years to figure out how to use okay. this in a way where I would be proficient. How yeah, how long I did it? I think it would take you years. I think it would take you like maybe a good two weeks practicing to get used to how a brush works. Really? How long did yeah. it take you to sort of start to to feel comfortable, confident that you weren't going to destroy your only piece of artwork? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> really? That yeah, would be... The only, the only reason being is because I, I, don't, I, I don't tend to use brush for everything. I use a quill. Okay, mm -hmm. so so what's the quilt? What's the difference between this and the quilt? This is a quilt. It's a it's a knit. It's a metal pen. It's basically a pen, right? So, so you use a quilt. Quilt. You you enjoy a quilt. I like quilts. Yeah. Brushes are, are one of the things that you want to first learn how to ink with. 
Why? Um, the reason why is because if you can brush, if you can ink with a brush, you can ink with anything. Sure, obviously, because a brush is fucking hella hard. <laughs> it's about learning control. Uh huh. Okay. Quill can definitely rip into the paper easily. Can it? Right. Yeah, because it's a it's a sharp tip. It's a metal tip. Right. So if I have to run this, you hear that? Yeah. Okay. That's the quill. It's scratching the paper. Right. It's but I've you've had like but we've had lifetimes to sort of practice using pens. Right. But you can also get the same type of line quality on a pen. Like for instance, that brush pen you have, this one. I'm right? so excited. So this one you can turn around and these type of strokes you can get the same thing depending on the user. And do you rinse the do you rinse the once you're done with the brush, you rinse it out and it's like you just use it like a brush? You rinse yeah, it out you and rinse it's... it off, you wipe it down, and you want to make sure that you bring it back into a point, and then you put your your caps back on it okay. right, to keep it. If you have one, you keep it there. You keep that to keep it together. Um, yeah, I feel like an artist. I feel like this is sort of like like um, painting technique. Like I would have to learn. I feel like I'm learning like a whole new skill set, which I guess I am, right? It is. Are you are you comfortable with them? Yeah. Are you comfortable with them? Really? I'm I'm totally comfortable with them. It's just I still prefer to use a um a quill. I mean, if I if I need to do thick, heavy lines and I want to get nice, thick lines, right? Uh huh. Uh, let me open up and get one. Yeah, I would just destroy that whole piece. So say this was a a, a shoulder right straight here, or like a, a curve, right? And this was really big onto the panel, and I wanted to get nice feathering lines out of it. I would just you know, basically do that. And as I get more towards the top, I'll do the same thing. Right? But if I wanted to just give a nice heavy stroke, I could. Right? That's the thing about a quill or about a brush. You can just create those heavy lines. Right? Or you can create really nice thin ones. That's great, Wow. That's really good control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's the thing. It's like you want, it's like one of the big things is like if you're going to use a brush, you need to first find how do you want to use a brush? How are you going to, how are you going to become comfortable with that brush? Are you going to be more comfortable throwing lines? Or are you going to be more comfortable pulling lines? Right? That's the big thing. Throwing to pulling, what are you going to become more comfortable? And mm -hmm. then as you get better with a brush, you know, there's a lot of inkers out there that can go from thin, thin to thick to thin. Right? And you can... Okay, so I'm using the 5.0 or the, the, I guess it's 5, 5, oh five or something. Five over one, zero, or I don't know how you. You're using the number five, right? Okay. Yeah, the little tiny tiny one. Uh -huh. And that's great. That's sort of like a. That's sort of like the the pen brush basically because it has a a shorter, firmer, quill. Yeah, it has it has it has shorter hair. Yeah, and that I'm I'm comfortable with. Yeah, so it all matters in in, in terms of comfort, right? And I, some you, some people prefer can, longer brushes or longer 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 hairs. Um, normally, you want to use like a, a number two or a number three round brush for inking. You can also use a zero for fine details, but you should be able to if you're proficient enough. And it takes a long time if you if you're proficient enough to to be able to use one brush like a number like a number two or a number four or a number five. And, and you don't take care of your 
your brush well that ends up happening is that your hair starts to split. Like this brush I had in such a terrible one I had. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why is because this is, this is a cheaper watercolor brush. And that's the other thing is like, you don't have to go out and buy a $34, $50 um, brush. Right? You can get a pretty cheap, you know, watercolor brush. And it would do exactly the same thing. You can either do synthetic or you can do the actual hair. And do you um, have to... Do you have to rinse them out? Do you have to like set them away clean, or can you set them away dirty? Them dirty what's, that, what's gonna end up happening is they're gonna end up getting really um, mucky. Okay. And then you're gonna end up having a fair amount of ink. Okay. And then you go out and buy some more. That's why I said when you're first starting, you know, it's easy enough to go down to like um, the art store or at an anime shop or whatever it is that you buy your art supplies, or even like Ross. You can go into the art supply section and pick up some cheaper watercolor brushes, and that'll be fine too. Yeah, you don't you don't need to be like buying the the the, gr the greatest thing out there. Like anything will do. I mean, how I can generally use some cheaper um, paint brushes from like one of his daughter's like Crayola painting set or whatever, and use that to paint my feet. You know. I mean, it doesn't matter. Whatever you want to use or whatever you can get your hands on, get your hands on them. I like these synthetic watercolor brushes because, you know, they're about three bucks maybe a piece or maybe two dollars depending. And they do the synthetic hair and it's a watercolor brush, you know. You can rinse it out a bunch of times. You don't have to worry about this getting messed up. And these actually get some really nice lines. Um, so I like these. I like these watercolor brush pens. Because this allows me to just fill it up with ink and just pretty much play with the ink as much as I want. Like whenever I feel like doing it, I never have to like flip it. You know, and this allows me to to learn how to use control. Mm -hmm. if, I want, if I need more ink in it, I can just squeeze it, bring it to a sit, and do that. And I can also get some really cool dry brush techniques with it and whatnot with the hair. You know, but it's a really easy and nice way to just start practicing where I can just pull it out and be like, okay, let me let me practice throwing some more. You know, and this is a lot harder because the ink is always <clears throat> flowing down into it, so it's always filled with ink. But then it can get so saturated that when you go to put a, a nice thin line, it'll come out thicker than what you want. So then it's a really good way to learn how to control your pressure of when you're throwing down your lines for ink. Okay. You know? Um, so it's a, it's a really good thing to have, and these are these are only like a dollar or two on um in, on Amazon, or you can get them on eBay or whatever it is. You know. It seems you know it's, when I see you do this, it looks like you go into like this meditative state. Like, um, <laughs> like you're in this like meditative state, like you're like you're just like doing these lines, and you you're you're so comfortable at doing it, like you just. You're just like in this like um Yes, it looks it's very interesting. It kinda of freaks me out a little bit to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm like, I I don't know what he's doing. But you know, I mean it's it's just practicing your line quality, your line pitch. You right. Know? And you're trying to master something. Do you think it's necessary if you don't consider yourself trying to be an inker? What is the, what is the, I mean, I get that you want to be well-rounded, but like. You, you couldn't be, let, let's put it to this way. If I were to just go in and do every drawing where I, I didn't um, practice any type of fundamentals, right? Then half the stuff that I do would be like a hot mess, you know, because you're, you're never practicing Maybe your line quality, your line strokes, how to vary your strokes, how to use that tool, right? So it's like the longest thing, the reason why I first got these brush pens is because I was so hesitant to go back to using brush again, right? So I figured, let me do some brush pens, see how that works, see if I like the way it works, see, you know, what the quality of, of line strokes I can get out of it. And I, and I saw that I can get some pretty good quality out of this from thick to thin. The only problem that I have with brush pens 
because after a while the tip starts to frail, and I don't like that. Number one. Um, number two, I don't really like the way they pull out to a thin peak because, as you can see, it kind of breaks up. I don't like that. Um, and it doesn't allow me. It doesn't allow me enough coverage for where I want to be. Right? It, it feels. It it feels too forced into like a linear pattern. It's just like it's too much one side weighted, and it's like if you end up being if you end up doing a thing where you're gonna blast up the knee and you start using it and you start going back and forth like this, by the time you want to start throwing some nice thin lines, you've already frailed the tip of it enough that you can't get the quality of line that you want out of it without cutting it or doing some type of weird shit to it. So what do you use for your thinnest line? What I use for what? For your thinnest line. My Here's thinnest a line. Yeah. I can use uh Do you use these guys, the know. these uh micron pins? I have these I like use, micron I, pins. I use, micron. I use microns at the office, but um I use my copics, which are just like the microns. Okay. Um but these are since they're technical pins, right? It depends on like the smallest dimension. Like this one is a 0 0.05, right? So the line that comes out of this is like really thin. Okay. Yeah. Because I have one of those old school. Do you remember when we were using the, um, hold on just a second. We used to get so excited when you get those, like, uh, the ink tip pins. Hold on just a second. I'm sorry. Um, but there used to be, do you, you remember we used, oh, I can't find it now. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the pilot pens. The pilot pens, yes. So I bought one of those, like a 5.0. And I remember in high school, that was like, that, that was like high end <laughs> inking. Uh, do you see all these lines? Okay. And that is your, what is that? This is brush, right? Okay. And this is the line that I did with the five, four, five zero, and it's I drew them right next to each other. They're very and similar. The same. Yeah, and you said with the five, the uh, oh, there's a. This is the zero point five. Okay. The zero point zero five. And there's a zero point two five, huh? And that's for cross yeah, hatching. Yeah, but this is zero point zero five. So this is like. Smaller than 0 0.25. So this is like one of the thinnest um, pen tips. I think they also make a 0 0.03, which is really, really super fine. But, you know, it's like you really don't need to do anything that thin. But it's like if you can get a brush to do the same thing, if you're like, you know. Here's a 0 0.2. Thin. Am I going in the wrong direction? Yeah, but, yeah, <laughs> no, 0.2 <laughs> is smaller than 0.25, and 0.25 is smaller than 0.5. Oh, you have a 0 0.05. 0 .05. Yes. Oh. That's what this one is. Oh, I don't have that. Then I have a 0 0.35, and 0 0.1. Fantastic. All right. So you would, so if I were be, if I was going to be doing this, I would be doing this with, I would be using these. So, th okay. So this is my opinion. My opinion is brushes are for like high end, like really practice sort of like calligraphy, sort of like, um, life drawing sort of like grayscale art i think okay. this like right now i could like straight off go into hot cross hatching with this it looks like my ends are sloppy but Maybe you can't do the brush. i couldn't go do that with the brush my it would be wobbly all over the place 
No, but you could if you practice. Well, I'm not gonna. That's the point. I'm not gonna practice. <laughs> The amount of work that it would, why would I do that much work with a brush when I could do the same exact thing with a pen without, with like no time investment? Now see, that's the, that's the big thing about it. I gave you the, I gave, I gave you the brushes and ink and everything else and the, and the different things in case you ever wanted to get into doing ink washes and you got inspired to do an ink wash or you got inspired to, or you, you wanted to do a heavy black area, right. you can just do it with your brush and ink. That I will you know, do. That I will definitely use it for the heavy blacks. You know, so if you're spotting blacks or any other type of stuff, you can just go in there and do it. For sure. And again, even with even with a with a uh, a mechanical pen or like these multi liners, right? right? If you wanted to do rendering, right? Say this is the arm, and say you're gonna have this area be in shadow, right? And you want to have render lines come off of it instead of just drawing straight lines like that. I would, I would suggest putting some weight to the end of the line before you pull it, so you can get nice thick to thin, right? Or even build up your thickness and then pull thin lines, right? That way you can have a little bit more line to it. Hmm. Okay. Right. And then, like, that's just just a suggestion. Right, right. You know, because we, you know, we have we, we we have different styles, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying that you can get still your thick to thin, regardless of what what tools you use. It's just I tend to lean towards the the thought process of if I want to do something specific i'm going to have multiple tools like here's one of my my main tool i use right so if i want to go ahead and use this like i can use this to write you know and i can get really nice line quality out of it right so if i wanted to use this it's a flat edge but it allows me to get some really nice lines out of it you know and that's the thing about it. It's like I, I have tools for everything that I want to do, the pen nail and everything. But then at the same time, that doesn't mean I can't turn around and use it just to make a nice, even straight line. You know, it's all about what is it, what is it going to do? Right? Does that make sense? That does, yes. Spectacular, spectacular. Point four five. Let's do some hair on her. Like I love my detail. My detail is awesome. Oh my! What is that? It's another nib. I don't know what a nib is. This is a nib. What's a it's nib? A quill. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. It's a quill. Normally quills, like, for instance, this one, this is a calligraphy pen. Okay. This is a calligraphy pen. And I have a bunch of different ones, right? But instead of me using it as a calligraphy tip, I use it for inking. Because I can get different lines out of it. I can also get nice borders out of it. If I was to turn around and just wanted to do a straight line for a border, I can just get some nice borders out of it. Right. If I'm just doing that so I can put it with a ruler, drag that through, and I have a nice fit. Right. If I want to go ahead and buy my name, I can do that. Right. If I want to write some kanji, I can do that. All right. And you can do any number of So what is the the thing that I need to know for inking? Because I'm about to start inking. Let's do it. The biggest thing you need to know is be able to control your line weights. Um, for a comic book inking, you want to have line weights. You want to do thick to thin. Um, regardless, it, I, it really depends on the style of, of, of art you want to do. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to do more mainstream traditional, and, and 
like with rendering and everything else, you tend to look at what other artists are doing, or, or sneakers are doing with artists' work in terms of depicting um, a lot of artists today tend to lean more towards the, the manga, anime type of cartoony style where everything's one line and they have an even outline of throughout the, 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 the outline of the character. Which, as you know, is my favorite. Gold. Huh? Which, as you know, is my favorite. Right. Um, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's a style. Right. Um, it's, a, it's a very stylistic um, uh, thing to desire. It's, it's very desirable by, by a lot of people, not by myself. Right. And it's um, and it's and it's a and it's a simpler way to ink. It's basically you know, you you play more yeah, yeah you play more into accident, I think, right? Because you, you basically get the basic shape and then the rest is sort of like kind of haphazard. Um I, I it all depends on the artist. Like I honestly it really depends on the artist. Yeah. I I don't it's not something that I buy a for. Right. Honestly, have um, you have you seen some of um, what's his name's newest stuff? Uh, he's been posting a lot. Your uh, what's his name? Uh, Wills Potasio. I have not seen his recent stuff. He's been posting a lot of his his inks, and they are, you know, beautiful the way that you like, but they're also sort of like wild too. They're sort of like intensely inked, intensely hatched, and you know, the form is really strong, the depth is really strong, the black is really strong, but it's also not, um, it looks like it's not controlled either, which is, I guess is sort of an oxymoron. I know why. Why? He, um, he uses Photoshop a lot now, and he created brushes that create that. Um, that line quality that he used to do in his pencils. No way. Yeah, so he has a brush that, that basically creates like a raking type of look. Right? Wow. So now when he inks, he just has to go from the dark form and just and just do a few strokes and it creates that rake look. That's why it's very even in one type of thing and looks very messy because uh-huh. it's, it's, it's an actual brush that he's using in Photoshop. Huh, that's kind of amazing. So, yeah, so that's what that's yeah, it looks it looks so interesting, you know. But it also, it, it, yeah, it looks really it looks really organic though too. So I'm kind of surprised that it's a it's a a brush. That's kind of amazing. Yeah, it's a brush and photo Okay. Um, I the last time I saw him at a convention, I bought this art book. Mm-hmm. Um, I had that on my bookshelf, but um, he did a cover. Of, I think it was X-Men. Okay. And he had like X-Men on the phone and all of them were throwing this up in the floor plan. And his storm was just beautiful on the back panel. Okay. And his storm, it's like when he pencils, it's just beautiful. Um, mm. I, I just don't understand why he doesn't pencil as much as he, he, he used to. Hmm. Well, okay. Well, I'm going to try to see if we can do this. Do you have any ideas? Do you want to do a warm-up exercise or are you warmed up? What do you, what's your intention for tonight? What's your intention for tonight? I'm going to do the night calling because I need to send this. I got to get this done and send this off to uh, L, L, L. That's right. You gave that is as a, a win for your first subscriber, right? Da, 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 da. So let's just, I'm gonna try to finish this up. Well, um, anybody out there who wants to subscribe to Coins and Gang, feel free to press the button. <laughs> I don't think you have a subscriber for me. Huh? I don't think you have a subscriber for me. I think, don't you, isn't it automatic? No. Oh. You have to reach a certain amount of like consistent viewers, um, so many followers. So you, so you can get an affiliate subscriber. Oh. Um, affiliate. Are you really? Yeah, I'm an affiliate. Not, I'm not a partner. Just an affiliate. That's cool, though. I guess. What does it do? Basically, allows you to have emotes and um, get subscribers. 
Oh, that's cool. And um, what are um? Did you read any new books this week? Uh, yeah, mostly mostly DC books. Okay, what are you reading? Uh, I, uh, I read Batman and Wonder Woman: Brave and Bold. Um, I I finished reading all the trades to X Men Gold. Oh, um, I'm almost there. I need to start reading. I picked up all the trades to X Men Blue. Oh, the um, trades. What is that? Okay. Trade paperback. Okay. So basically, I, I picked up all the issues. So I have all the issues current to X Men Gold, X Men Red, X Men Blue. Okay. Um, but then I picked up the trades because I'm not going to read the single individual. Okay. So I'm just collecting them. Right. Um, okay. So X Men Gold, X Men Blue. Uh, and have you decided which one you like better yet? I haven't read blue yet. So okay. I haven't read one ounce of blue yet. Um, okay. All I know is that blue is the young X Men, the one from the past that he's brought over. Right. So I know that. Um, you know, I don't know. I, my enjoy is out at the moment. I know until I start reading it. Um, I know I hate the writing on uh, uh, New Agent. Oh, I still didn't read that. My um tablet didn't take it up. Like I put it on and downloaded it and put it on my tablet, but it wouldn't read it, so I have to do it again. <laughs> I doubt that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that. That's so funny. It's not as bad as the writing on Iceman, but it's it's pretty bad. Is it made for kids? Do you think they've gone young? No. no Have you no. thought about that? Dude, no. <laughs> okay. No, they they have they have like zombies in this in this issue and like severed bodies and all that other type of stuff, you know, and, like, dead people eating people and all that. I mean, literally zombies. So it's not like they're doing it for kids. And, they, and the fact that they mentioned The Walking Dead in the book, uh -huh. I'm, just, I'm just like, no, just stop. Is Walking Dead owned by um, Marvel? No, it's Image. Huh. Right? I... I guess did they read? I haven't read it, so I don't know. Oh, you told me I should have read it because we were supposed to talk about it. I haven't read it yet, so my um, but um, as far as I know, I thought they were doing the thing with um rebooting um, what's her name um, mm -hmm. uh no um, what's her name um. Mirage. I thought they were trying to give Mirage her powers back. Because I, I thought they would not be real. Like all the horror stuff. No. That was my theory. No. That none of it was real. No. It's, no. It's bad. Okay. It's just bad. Uh, I just can't get behind it, honestly. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish Barney because it's a meme. Um, and Justin tells me it's gonna play like a significant part in the in the new um, stories that they're gonna do. Mm -hmm. But like I don't I I don't know what the hell it is. I don't know why Marvel allows writers to turn around and not look at the history of a freaking character in the past. Not even over the past five years. Just in the past six months, it's like this writer jumped on this book and made uh, freaking Najik a goth, like, emo kid. And it's like, I'm sorry. Really? So they did make him younger. She's supposed to be an adult. Rick was supposed to be an adult. 
You're staying as an adult. So then it urged them to the point where they're all adults. And Richter's there. back too, huh? That's cool. Yeah, Richter's in there, right? And he's, he's angsty and has an attitude for no reason. Uh. It's... That's terrible. Um, like, all they want to do is destroy all the characters that, that people, you know, grew up reading or had read in the past six months or a year, you know, and just throw all that stuff out because they're like, oh, I want to do my own thing. And it's like, can we stay true to the character somehow? You know, you can add to them, you can, you know, embellish their personality what you made it for it, but to just make them all hateful and nasty and angsty and attitude for no reason. It's like they give attitude to each other for no reason. Wow. It, it just doesn't make any sense. That does sound strange. You know, and it's like why would this allow this nonsense? And it's like, dude, what are you doing? Mm. I think I'm like completely off camera, huh? Why didn't anybody tell me that? Uh, I didn't even see. Uh, I was like completely off camera. Okay. Mm, and I think I think put keep putting my head in the camera. Mm. I think so. I'm sorry, viewers. I'm getting used to your 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 cameras and people watching and listening and all that sort of stuff. So you have to bear with me. It's very uh. They're just like whatever. Just. <laughs> Wrong. Shut <up>. Right. <laughs> do what you're supposed to do. But I'm like, how do I draw with this big camera in my fucking face? It's in my head, front of my head. I want to like bend down. You're like all bent down now. I can just see the top of your head now. You can only see what the top of my head. Yeah. Well, maybe in my face can. Yeah. I'm not worried about that. It's like. You see me, you see me. There you go. You want me to get it down some? There you go. Now you can see my ugly mug. No, I want my my beautiful face showing all the time. <laughs> my hair. Now you can see these lines just instead of just the top of my head. Right. I keep switching back and forth like I'm doing something spectacular. Yeah, but I really don't like what they're doing right now. It's, it's a little disappointing. Um, I love what they're doing with X Men. Um, X Men Brothers. Okay. I think it's really well done. Um, Kitty's a badass. So I totally hate X Men Gold. Really? I think it's really bad. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess. <laughs> I always feel weird when I say stuff like this, but it just seems very like boy energy. Like it's just a bunch of fights, literally from fight to fight to fight. And so I have no idea what's happening, to be honest. <laughs> um, like the negative zone, like they, they, you know, they fall from the, I don't know what opened up the negative zone, but I also know that they're trying to cross connect, um, what's happening in the movies, what's what's happening in the comics. And I'm watching um I'm watching Agents of, Shield. Agents of Shield, right? And they're doing the whole um breach in the universe, right? Which mm -hmm. is what also was supposedly happened with the the you know, all the the cross Avengers books and stuff. I you know, I really don't know what's happening but you know so you know they're in the negative zone and then a ship crashes in the negative zone and then storm winds up on a planet spoiler alert and i'm like where is this planet how is there a planet in the negative zone <laughs> like i'm just so confused um but basically it's just fight to fight to fight and i just feel like that's very sort of boy energy and i i have no interest in it it just it's just boring to me actually like it's just it's fighting. It's just a bunch of people fighting over and over again, and I have no story. Well, I don't know what's. Because I don't, I don't boys are dumb. No offense. 
<laughs> and it seems like it's being written by boys for boys. And they're not, like you said, I don't think they're paying much attention to character character development or um, or anything, really. I don't know what they're really doing. Well, okay, if you get past all of the, the fighting, because there is a lot of the fighting, the funny part about it is that um, Kenny also makes a comment about that. He's like, every time we get a break, we get a tap or some crap happening. What the hell is going on? It's really strange. He makes a to it. Right. Okay. So it's like they must be trying to build us for something in story of why it's happening. Um, that's the first thing that I can see. But yet, it doesn't make any sense how many times they're going to fight. However, one of the last stories that they ended up doing, well, everything is, is basically has been orchestrated by different people. Like the first half of the story arc, everything was orchestrated by that senator. The congresswoman or senator or whatever, which she wants right. to go ahead and do the new deportation act and everything else. Right. So it's like there's a bunch of stuff being set in motion purposely. Um, the thing that happened with Gambit and the Sentinel and that new Sentinel, that was an accident, right? That went awry, uh, awry which totally makes sense that would happen. Mojo attacking, different thing. <laughs> you know, Mojo was like, we're running out of rage. So where's the Sentinel guys come from? Because the Sentinel came and then destroyed his own other Sentinels who were not Sentinels but human part people. Like, I was like, there is too much story. Ha like, there's too much happening, and there's no, like, explanation, which I guess, you know, they tell you in writing that you're not supposed to explain stuff, but I'd like a little bit. Um, but you like it. You're liking, do you like, are you liking the way that the, you're liking how, how badass the characters are coming across, though, too, right? No, I don't like how badass they're coming across. I'm liking the dynamic between Kitty and Colossus. Okay, that is good. I agree with you. They're they're playing that up a lot, actually. They have a lot of character development happening on the sidelines of all the fighting, even with all the Logi. You know, even like when he was when he him and Omega Red was fighting, there was a lot of back and forth talking, and a lot of it had to do with the fact of how Omega Red was talking to him, saying that you know you're no you're you're not any better than you, your younger self, and this and the other thing. If I was fighting your younger self, blah blah blah, and he was like, I don't need to be young to beat your ass, type of thing. And they were like outwitting each other constantly, right? And who is um, this? Omega Red and Wolverine. Ugh, I don't think I remember Omega Red happening. Okay. Okay. Well, they brought Omega Red back to life in the book. Oh, okay. Did, uh, I saw that. But did they did he did they ever die? Did they ever kill him? Did they ever resolve it? Yeah, Wolverine killed him. Okay. I don't remember it being resolved. Yeah, Wolverine killed him later on in the book. So maybe I'm not paying attention enough or something. Maybe you just don't like the story. Yeah, that's possible too. Like, if you don't like the story, you're not buying into it. It's like it's a pink boy energy. It is. I'm not into it. I don't follow it. I'm like lost. I'm literally lost. Like, like I'm like, what is going on? Um. So did you understand what's going on with the Mojo thing? I did, cause that I remember. Like that we love, cause that's the point of Mojo. Like he's like, like you said, time for ratings. So he like you know decides to you know take over the world, um, and make a game show out of it. I you know that works for me, um, but the uh, but like the whole who brought Omega Red back and why, like you know the whole like he creates he creates a a version of the old, um, so let me just, so so the girl the 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 lady who's doing the mutant registration act. She pays for Mastermind to come out of jail. Mastermind creates the new um, uh, Brotherhood of Evil Mutants using the old name of previous X Men or the old name of previous of the previous 
yeah, of the previous um, Brotherhood. Brotherhood, who are also previous X-Men, by the way, because, you know, Richter is also one, and so is Pyro at some point. And so I'm like, okay, so why does he need them to be the previous old Brotherhood in order to bring back the Brotherhood? Like, why is he doing that? Do you need to invoke fear because the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants will suck in some new Right, but Brotherhood of Evil Music can always be anything. Like, I don't know why the writers would do that. Like, just make a new Brotherhood. Um, so I didn't understand why he was doing that. So you're saying he was doing it to bring back fear, to just sort of use the name. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's what it was in the story, so the Senate should have told him to make use that name. And so she... Right. And so uh, she did it because she's trying to say that mutants are bad. And right. so that's why she... And, but why are why is he doing it for money? The no, the mastermind. Because he's doing hate. But mastermind is part of the Hellfire Club, right? Um, They're like all multimillionaires. I don't know now. He's still getting paid. So that seemed That's weird to me. Again. It boils down to that whole thing of these new writers not looking at the history of the characters. Right? Yeah. The fact that when if you were to just easily go back and look at, you know, um, the old uh, Marvel Presents uh, Weapon X before it was Wolverine as Weapon X, and they show the whole implant being put into his arm. You look back at the old Marvel Universe comic books and whatnot. Hey, what's up, Arthur Potato? How you doing? Welcome to the stream. How long have you been now? Sorry, I had to look up. Um, if you look back at those old books and you read it and you see the history that he was... Hey, Arthur Potato, how you doing? Uh, then that's one way of being able to, to stay within continuity, stay within canon without changing stuff. But, you know... It doesn't feel like Marvel cares about any of that. Right. That's why, like, Wolverine has one claw now. And it's like, if you would have stayed with that back in the day, you could have that one. Well, he has the claws again now, right? He has the regular claws back again. Oh, he has the animation, but that's because um, Apocalypse put the antimanium back in Wolverine. Okay. Apocalypse <laughs> Hi, our potato. We're talking geek talk, and we're doing some inking stuff right now. Ah. Uh, Hope you had a great uh, week, and thanks for joining us. Uh, oh, thanks a lot. That's really nice to say. Uh, our potato says they've been looking. They've been looking forward to our, our dual stream. But um, oh, that's awesome. yeah. So we're talking about uh, the books that we we're liking lately, and we're doing uh, inking. We did an inking tutorial earlier, and I'm trying to ink this page of uh, Cloak and Dagger. And uh, these houses over there, inking a piece for uh, his first subscriber um, that he's going to send to them. I'm trying to figure out all these inks and pens and, you know, see if I can have a little fun doing this tonight. Uh, but I'm glad you uh, were looking forward to it. That's awesome. We're trying to get in the groove. Let's see, point two zero. Let's try a point two zero. Um, yeah, I don't know if they're, but you know, I I think you'll really like blue. Blue is my favorite with the kids, and it's so funny that I say that that they're, you know, that I don't like all the fighting that's in the gold, but there's tons of fighting in the blue also. Uh, oh, cool. Our potatoes also inking. <laughs> Uh, Inception? I don't know. What, oh, Inception, like the movie. That's funny. I don't know what that is. So, uh, in Inception was the movie where you you oh, it's a dream okay. within a dream within a dream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it's like ink within an ink within an ink. Right. Um. But there's a lot of fighting in it in X Men Blue as well. So. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I through the book. It doesn't seem very interesting. Oh my god, I love it. They're they're trying to like fix the time stream because they've broken it and so they're yeah. trying to fix it so they're jumping through and trying to figure out when um 
when the breach happened. And so they bring back, we get to see all the different versions of the X-Men, which I love. So we get to see the X-Men, the babies. We get to see X-Men from the future who go to the past pretending to be the babies. Uh, and then we have, we see Generation X, old school with M and Penance and Mondo and Skin. Uh, and White Queen helps the regular X-Men. So when we go to the future and she turns bad, she tells them to remember that she helped them, even though she knows she's going to be bad again. So I thought that was really cool. Oh, what kind of story? Well, you don't have to share what kind of story you're writing, Art Potato, but um, you can if you want to. <laughs> uh, I'm actually trying to work on a story soon, too. I'm actually putting the little pieces together in my head. Um, to try to see what I want to start creating um, um, while I'm on on Twitch with everybody. I told you that, right? But I'm, I'm going to try to see if I can create something live with everybody. With no, you. No. Yeah, so I'm trying to create the do a little world building right now, how I want to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, as always with my writing, I want to have like a, a, um, you know, a Christian component. Um, shit, I'm going to mess this up. I know it. I'm a little nervous. A little nervous about what? Messing up my piece. My ink. All right. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do the world building for it. Um, so how is everybody's day going so far? Oh, cool, cool. Well, I don't want to distract you out of your um your work. Um though, don't you know, don't 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 get out of the groove if you're in the groove. Um, but you know, I think it's always great for people for other artists to sort of share share the stuff that they're they're excited about. I know, right? I don't. <laughs> I promise. I'm so not that person. <laughs> Actually, Heart of Hearts don't really believe ideas can be stolen. Well, that's not true. I totally believe ideas can be stolen, but that if they can be stolen, you have a, uh, enough to create more. I always think, okay, well, that means you should use that as, like, proof that you have the gift. So for all of you out there who have had your work stolen, which, you know, it happens, just use it as a reminder, <laughs> right? I, I can, I can uh, testify that. <laughs> right? Just use it as a reminder that you are gifted and talented and you have the skills to create brilliant things in the future. Yep, that's why they stole it in the first place. That's why they stole it in the first place, because they ain't got they own. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Truth. Am 
my god, this is gonna look. I'm trying to play with the idea that the light is coming from her, so I'm actually trying not to connect lines, which is light is from from dagger. Dude, that that uh, pillar of pan, that shit was tight. Wasn't that great? Blew me out of the water. So everybody who's listening, I am doing this cloak and dagger that I'm actually very proud of. You know, I'm on the on the path to get my skills back. But as I was going through my you know my day, living my life like it's golden, you know, eating sushi and pizza every day, I saw an Instagram of. What's his name again? Philip Tan. Of Philip Tan, who did his own version of Cloak and Dagger for some strange reason. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And blew me out the water. It was so amazing. Um, And current, like they looked like sort of young, cool. but more than, any, than anything, the style was on point, right? It looked so. I don't know if they look current and young and cool. I think they just look cool, but they did not look current. They look like old school cloak and dagger. Okay. Just in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. Because it was the original costume. Um, cloak looked really old. She did look really old. <laughs> but in a good way. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> And it's something that I'm totally going to steal tonight. Like he did this thing where he made her skin effervescent at some point, like almost metallic. And I was oh, like, ooh. I did that because I saw the inking on right. the Instagram of it, and I was definitely done with color. Right, on like Photoshop afterwards. But the idea that, you know, because I have her, if you look at mine, I did her in black and white. And I thought, because I didn't want to make her naked. But I think better than doing it in black, which she should not be having black on her, I should do it in like just white, white, like sort of iridescence, which is great. So I was like, stolen. Thank you for that. Yeah. It was a great idea. It was a great idea. Really good. Yeah, you can steal it from me. And then you can steal it. And then make it your own. And then you're like, yeah, I, 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 I did that. I totally did that. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I do. I definitely. After my day, I have a long, long day at work. Doing our stream, after the stream, going to bed. How are you? Then to another long day. Hmm. And just that. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Too- I, mean, uh, I started posting uh, Pitch of the Days again. On uh, Discord, so if you're on Discord, feel free to post pitch of days. Okay. That would be awesome. And what is the sketch of the day? Is it just a sketch of the day? Yeah, here, let me grab my sketchbook and stuff. I'll show you what it is. I don't know if you, you, can, you can see it on Discord, but I'll go grab my sketchbook now. This is too small. Uh, 
bad about it is being funny. How so? It's just being funny. Mm. Say hi to the family for me. I said say hi to the family for me. Oh, so this was the last thing you saw. And then I did this. You saw, I, I sent you this image. And then, oh, that was great, yeah. And so you said it would look better in five point perspective, but it's three point perspective. This is five point perspective. It is five point perspective. Yeah. So okay. One, two, three, four, five. So basically, this. This This is a three point perspective. That's two and then three. Wow, that is great. It's so funny because you know that is such. I think that is such a great shot, and I was thinking of doing that for. What's his name? Because it's so kingly, right? It's it's sort of like the definition of a of a of a throne shot, right? And a shot of sort of shows dominance and power. Yeah, I was gonna show him on the throne with Storm behind him, but of course I couldn't figure out how to do that. I wonder if I have the sketches of what I was trying to do earlier with that. Big rings huh? Big rings That's her power. I wanted to do like sort of sol solar flares mm -hmm. instead of the daggers. I want their powers to sort of interact more. Yeah, solar flares. More like solar flares. Are you inking it? I am inking it. Yeah. It's already ruined. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, it would be cute. But it's a good, it's a practice, you know. You know, one of the things that one of the gifts of being older is that nothing is needs to be precious anymore. So that's good. Who did this? Who 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 drew this pose for me? Who drew this pose? This one before I did. With the side face? This entire pose, I actually had this in my head, and I pictured in my head when I um when I drew this because I was just practicing female anatomy, and it's J. Scott Campbell who did this with um Danger Girl. So oh. The cover was like when she was coming out of the pool or something like this, and that's the same angle, but looking similar to this. Oh, I don't know. I don't watch. I don't know Danger Girl. You don't know Danger Girl, J. Scott Campbell, know the book? I mean, I know, but I never read, I never bought a copy. I never read one. I was um, completely bored. Oh, okay. I was like, nobody has powers? What? I'm not watching that. I'm not reading that. I don't even know why he would make that. I was like, I don't even know why he would make that. <laughs> it's like Angel, like, espionage, spy thing, like, yeah, yeah. I had absolutely no interest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think I bought even one episode, one issue. I was yeah. like, nope. Um, and then I just started doing like more stuff, just martial arts and fighting stances and the flat frame. That's great. It, it reminds me, I thought I was going to say it looked like the pose of uh, Fahrenheit coming out of the water from the the swimsuit edition. But oh, I don't remember that one. Hers, that one was much more straightforward. Yeah. Well, I, I, mean, I did. I was practicing butt today. And then doing more poses and one side shot. And stuff. And then hands again. Yay, hands. Yay, hands. Always hands. Yeah, that's, that's all I did today. So, so I posted these yesterday on um, the very first sketch for the sketch for the sketch. I'm like, eh, may as well. May as well. So what are you doing for sketch of the day? Sketch of the day? Nothing. Oh, what did you do for sketch of the day on Discord? So the things that I showed you. Okay. So I'm still trying to figure out who this guy is. Do you remember him from I used to be obsessed with him from a while ago? Cool. He's on my page. 
Oh, that artist? Yeah, I don't know who he is. I have to... That guy with that cover? I have no idea. Right? I'm like, I, who? I don't know who that guy is. I'm like, who are you? I have that book, too. It's so good. And I love, like, all his proportions. I think they look so cool. Yeah, it's, it's really one of the, stylized. It's really stylized. It's one of the things that makes me, you know, comfortable in sort of playing with, um, you know, proportions. Like, things don't have to sort of be naturalistic. Like, I love the way those those things fit together. So this is the one, I think this one, and he had another one with that he did it really well with. It was Jim. This is the um, swimsuit edition from um, Wildstorm. Yeah, Wildstorm. So this is the Fahrenheit where she's That's in the water. One, right? This is number one, yeah. yeah. But this is the, there was a better one that Jim Lee did of her with she coming out, coming out of the water. Yeah, I guess that was in two. Let's see if this guy has a signature anywhere. His name should be right there. I don't think this is the same person as this one. This guy is. I don't know who he is. This is him. Yeah, they don't have his. They have his signature. Lefert. 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 That's like what his skin is, skin, sig, signature says. His signature says Lefert. Lefert. That's what his okay. signature says. I guess I'm Mr. Lefert. All right. Who are you, Mr. Lefert? Let's see. If, let's see if we can Google and see who Mr. Lefert is. All right. <laughs> The Furt artist. We're gonna look for this person who really is an inspiration artistically. Looks like he has something on deviant art. Oh, you got a bear for on that one. Oh, yeah. Huh. That can't be the same person. No. no. Found somebody on Deviant Art, but he's too young. Oh, Laferti. Laferti. Let's go. We're gonna go for Laferti. Fine art by Dan Laferti. Looks like he switched into fine art. Yeah. Oh, but it goes back to him. Oh, there you are. No, that's terrible. These are just dandelions. No. I'm sorry. That does not qualify as fine art. <laughs> For some people, it uh, No. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> wow. If you're painting dandelions... <laughs> Um, just an no, FYI. Don't call yourself a fine artist if you draw dandelions. Because this is sort of me, will be like, no. You are not Disqualified. Stop lying to yourself. Right. That's truly how I believe, actually. <laughs> He's so funny. He has like all these. No offense. I'm so sorry, whoever you are, but he has like all these. Like he has tons of like pages on the internet of his abstract fine art, and it's basically like dandelions and trees 
and wind. No, thank you. Yeah. You're so much nicer than me, my mom. <laughs> I, I, think I think I just appreciate people's art for what it is. Uh -huh. um, because art is so subjective. Right. It's very yeah. true. Um, and because of that, it's like, who am I to turn around and say what art and what's not? Oh, uh, okay. He's definitely, here he is. He's like gone to the nth level. He's a fine artist. Looks like he's done a couple things for Batman. Um, yeah. And he's moved more into. Um, I wish I could send you stuff. Or post it in Discord. Post, post the link in Discord. Is that how you do it? Yeah. Um. All right. Um. Let me see if I can find him. He's really, really beautiful, actually. And what I'll do is I'll post it for everyone else in Discord to see what they want to check it out as well. Okay, so I copy the link. Is that what you're saying? No. Mm -hmm. Save it. Post it in our chat for this year. Go to our chat in Discord, and I put it in the message. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Put it in the message. What did I get to you? Nope. Nothing happens. You have to put it in. You have to type it in or whatever it's supposed to be. Are you still there? I am. I'm. I'm. Ugh. Oh my God! Give me a minute. You're always like so. <laughs> I'm old. Yeah, I'm so old. Leave me alone. They just told me right now. Hospit gets at hospitalstation.com. This is current. So that's the old piece, and this is his current stuff. So you can see the okay. difference. Do you see the difference? I'm sure you see the difference. His name is Jeff Lafferty. So he basically does realism now. <laughs> What's going on? Your poses. Oh, does she do? Do they do daff, da, dandelions? Fine artist, it's like weird. It's like weird. She's so annoying. First world problem. Am I right? Bad joke. The voice of Jeff Bridges, I love it. <laughs> well, we will just have to disagree. <laughs> Cause, mm, and that's I'm not saying I don't like fine artists. I love fine artists, to be honest. I'm just saying that they um they need to not they need to be talented. All right. <laughs> No, and like post themselves all over the internet. I'm sorry. Jeff Lafferty. Let me follow him on DeviantArt. Are you going to follow him? Yeah. I used to have a. Oh my God. Oh, I just realized I have DeviantArt, my Dom, and I have the original. On my DeviantArt, I have the original. Logo for Hot Sketch, I bet. If mm -hmm. I, yeah, if I can remember, I think I was called one Hot Sketcher. Well, if you don't remember, you can always just say don't remember, and I don't remember your username and password, and I'm 2006, and I do. Wow. Mm. 
Sorry guys, I'm taking a little little internet break from my inking because I got excited by an artist. Uh, and of course now I'm gone down a rabbit hole of finding my original sketch work from a kid as a kid. As a kid. Uh, Send this to pretty similar to what we to what I have now, except for the background. <laughs> Uh, but I don't have any um, any art saved, I guess. You don't have any art saved. The only thing I have is the um, is the logo. It's so interesting mm -hmm. that I remembered that that's where it would be. That's funny. That is right. Out of nowhere, it comes. Things come to mind. Mm. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord. Yeah. So we're coming on eleven o'clock. What do you think, but um getting ready to uh, shut it down, off. huh? Yeah, we're getting ready to shut it down. Time. Yeah, everybody. Uh oh, thank you very much, uh Dr. Janky. I appreciate the the uh the look. I'm I'm doing my first foray into inking tonight. Uh, uh, what brings you over, uh, Dr. Jinky? We are. We we're staying on ten. Tonight I kind of definitely need to focus on my time limits. I have a bunch of stuff I gotta do tomorrow, so it's hard for me. I'm not gonna make it, and I have them all sitting in my phone. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm glad we were able to do this tonight. To apologize, but you know, life dictates things. Yeah, we had a good run tonight, so I don't see the issue. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe if uh, we're still on call, we might jump back on during the week or during the weekend or something. Like that. I think I'm going to try yeah, to start yeah. doing that with my, I'm going to try to start you guys, hopefully trying to, trying to, uh, looking at people's work. Has, has, any, has anybody um, stood out to you, Dr. Jenkins? We do this every night from like not every Thursday night from between nine nine thirty to eleven eleven thirty sometimes a little longer, uh, but we're a little burnt out tonight so we're gonna call it our time at our timeline. Um, so follow me and I'm doing a, a dual Twitch with a dual stream with uh, Bee's House. So we do this every Thursday. So go ahead and uh, follow and visit us uh, next time and. Uh, let me know some of the other people that you follow on uh, Twitch. But I'm going to try to start maybe, maybe, um, jumping on randomly throughout the week. Um, you know, just to sort of see, you know, see how that works. What do you think about that? If you have time during the day, you should definitely jump, jump on during the day. Right? Yeah, I, and I do. I have no reason not to. So, um, I might start doing that. 
I did. Thank you for the follow, Dr. Drake Dan. It always uh, scares the Jesus out of me. <laughs> That's creepy right? Well, you know, you got to keep it sexy. You got to keep it interesting. You got to keep it hot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so, you know. Uh, oh, cool. That's that's great. Uh, we're trying to keep it a little bit more regular so we can, you know, you know, get some sort of uh, regularity when we're doing it. Oh, that's really great, Art Potato. I am working with a character right now that I'm trying to create with a disability. That's so f fabulous, actually. Fear-based thinking, the main characters are female. So I'm just going to say it because I'm actually really excited about it. So I just, just created a character um, that I think I'm going to call either Gizmo or Gyro. I'm actually leading more towards Gizmo, but Gyro is disabled, and I haven't decided if I'm going to put him in a wheelchair or on crushes, but I'm actually thinking of more like a back brace thing, like this huge sort of like back brace holder component for him maybe, yeah, right? That's more interesting, right? Yeah. Uh, and his power is um, like a gyroscope. So like a gyroscope, as long as it's moving, it can defy gravity. And as soon as it stops, it falls. But while it's moving, it can defy gravity. So gyro, basically, or gizmo, basically is can't walk or can't very move much of his body unless he uses his power. And when he uses his power, he's in constant motion and he can go anywhere. He can go up, down, like super acrobatics, upside down you know, levitate, like very movement anywhere. But as soon as he stops, his power shut down and he can't move again. I think that's a pretty cool, interesting power. What do you think, right now? Did you get that? All right. Well, I think it's pretty cool. I don't, I don't have an issue with it. I was like thinking a different name. Right. Is, what do you think, gyro or gizmo? Uh, neither. Really? Gizmo reminds me of... Gizmo is too... Literal. Literal. It's so literal, right? Gizmo reminds me of Right. Well, that's cool, too. No? You don't like that? Not in my mind. Because I expect to see a magua. I love that. Obsidia, she's autistic like yourself, but high-functioning. That's awesome. I'm all about... Um, and gyro sounds, she says gyro sounds dirty. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, um, but, uh, I love, I, I love representation in all media. And I was saying, I think we have very few disability characters, although we have to forget that Professor X was introduced disabled. He, he never had legs, but autistic characters are great. I have a brother who's autistic, uh, our potato. So I love that you're um, projecting that forward. Um, our end time is we usually go about two hours, so I think we're gonna we're starting to shut down right now. Um, but usually we go about two hours, and we usually start between nine and nine thirty yeah. on Thursdays. All right. Are we done? No, no, you're not on the screen protector. Uh oh. Do it. Um, gyro sounds sweet. Well, okay. Well, maybe I like gyro a lot. I actually like gizmo more. I do think gyro is too literal. Um. Uh, I have my notes. I put a note somewhere of a different of other names for for them. Uh, oh, say that again. A couple different names. Yeah. yeah. I think I had like oh, Topsy Turvy was another one. 
Topsy Turvy was a lot was another version. What's another um <laughs> well, one of the things, like I said, one of the things that I'm trying to do is create something that is more communal here. So I love feedback and thank you, our potato. Please think about it. I want feedback and sort of like maybe have it sort of be like sort of a community communal, I guess, um, creation. So. All ideas are welcomed and appreciated. Say that again. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I thought it was a good one too. I actually was just fascinated by the idea of the of the um, gyroscope. For some reason, I was watching some YouTube, and um, I was like, "What? There's a thing that like levitates." <laughs> Did you know that? I didn't know. I mean, for some reason, I didn't think about that. I knew what it, I had heard of one, but I didn't know what it did. I really didn't know that it, like, could, like, and it balances on a rope. And while it's, like, that's craziness. I was into science. I was into science. <laughs> I was into science. That's why I was, like, surprised that I didn't. I'm, but, okay, so maybe I forgot about it, but what I'm more, more intrigued by is that it defies the laws of physics, and it's like scientists are always saying that things don't defy the law of physics, and it totally does. They don't know why, but they use it for all of our sort of, like, mechanics. Um, they think that it's because, you know, the laws of force motion, laws of motion theory, you know, once in motion, it stays in motion. And so it creates its own force to try to keep it in motion, which I think is probably true. But the fact that they don't know, I think is fascinating. And that they, they like... Can't, they can't disprove it most of it. Right. They can't disprove it. And it's such a practical, easy instrument that shows you right off the bat, yeah, uh huh, I can defy the laws of, of of gravity right in front of your eyes. Um, so what? <laughs> and and nobody sort of like uses that. Like if I was a crazy, crazy Christian, which I am, but like if I was a really crazy, crazy Christian, like I'd be like, explain a gyroscope. <laughs> Anyway, so I thought it was a great character, especially the idea of like being able to do all these really amazing things with your body. And then as soon as you stop using your powers, you're sort of like immobile. Yeah. Oh, makes sense. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Congratulations. I'm at the point where I can Oh, kinetics is great too, actually. Ken, or just Ken, actually, sort of spelt with a, or kin, K I N. And I kind of could make him, and if he was like Asian, that'd be kind of cool. K I N, kin, with like a, an energy symbol above it. That's inter that's interesting. That's kind of I like how your mind works, Art Potato. That's really interesting. Instead of sort of you use it as a sort of full um play on words. 
Yeah, it's like kinetic energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I actually don't want it to be any sort of, like I said, I don't like the idea of being able to, to describe why it happens. So I don't want it to be sort of kinetic energy, which is a good one. Um, Why does gyro sound dirty? <laughs> Sounds like a vibrator. Ew! No, it doesn't. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Maybe. No, I'm still with it. I got it. Oh, you got it. I get 5%. I got it the name. I get 5%. You won't make any money off it, don't worry. Oh, is that what she meant? I was like, I don't get it. That's the name, 5%? What? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I know, right? 5% of zero? You're welcome to it. No. <laughs> oh. Good night, uh, DJ Kenji. Thank Appreciate the follow. And yes, thank you for watching and, and being part of the show. Appreciate it. We're going to say good night. Uh, see us again next week. Um, press the follow so that you get your notices. Uh, and uh, we're going to keep at it. That's beautiful, Vidom. I like it. I'm gonna say I'm actually gonna start recording um what I do offline for now on for all you guys so I wanna start posting it on on YouTube or uploading it to Twitch if you're able to upload videos. So I was just gonna start doing gonna, the same thing. I'm gonna start uh, recording the process of the stuff that I'm doing and the things that I'm working on so you guys can kinda of see what I'm doing offline so that since I'm not here all my all the time. Perfect. Um and then that way you guys can like follow along and whatnot and Still, be still feeling fine. I'm starting up my social day uh, once again on uh, Discord. So if you want, go ahead and uh, follow me on Discord or join the Discord channel. Um, so let me go ahead and check in there real quick. Let's go. Great idea. I will join you there doing the YouTube thing. All right, everybody. Love and light. You guys have a great one. Good night. And again, feel free to follow me on Discord. You can hit the little red chat on, on the main page to join the Discord. And you can go ahead and uh, add in your chicks today and stuff like that. Yeah. Like that. Feel free. I hope you enjoyed uh, everything. Hope you enjoyed the show and everything that we're doing. Sorry we made this up to the full dawn and the entire night and all this. But it's like, no fun to get here. Have a good night. Bye. Peace. Love and light.